that's going to wrap up the rookie segment of this. Let's move on to talking about some teams. I want to talk about Carolina because I'm smitten with Carolina. I love the smitten. Panthers. Um, but with what you're seeing out of Bryce right now, the clips that are coming out with him, the, the pinpoint accuracy where he's delivering some shit, the people talking about how he just feels different, looks different. I just, I've talked about this all off season, and it seems like we're getting a little bit more hype and things moving in the right direction. So that's always a positive. And hey, guess what? Confirmation bias again for me. And I, you know, hey, this is what it is. This is what you do. This is what this business is. Not that I'm in business. We need a little bit more money from y'all. So if you guys want to give us a couple bucks, head over uh, to patreon.com/slash <laughs> dynasty. Um, but you know, Bryce, Bryce is out there by all accounts playing some really good football, just dropping dimes. Yeah, there's no offensive line in front of that short man right there. It doesn't I, matter. I, I don't want to hear this right now. It doesn't matter. Come on, I'm gonna pour some rain on this. I, there was an there offensive you go. line, there, and he just put it exactly I where see. it needed that's to be. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. I want to see a clip with I, five I want you to be large able to put the ball where standing it needs in front to go. of him because you can watch a million clips of this shit of guys not putting exact. Look at this. That's a that's a pinpoint fucking dropping it in a bucket. Yeah, nobody's in wow. his face. Yeah, well, I hope there. There's somebody in his face. Did the same damn thing. Bang, right on the sideline. That's what I said. I just want to see. I want to see. I don't want to see the one where he's standing there with beside the Well, coach. it's training camp. This is what we do. But you see, there's plenty of clips where they're missing those things where they, you know, aren't aren't putting that ball exactly where it needs to be. And that's those those are the things that you saw from Bryce Young that that made him the first overall draft pick because he could do those things and he's a bit more cerebral. The problem was is it's a rookie year you get thrown into a shit storm with a bad coach and a bad situation and unrest all over this all over the uh, organization and then on top of that you got a bad offensive line that went from okay to bad and yeah. seat, you know and then the first thing you did with the new regime <laughs> is you went out and bought two guards two went good from, guards went from okay to bad right it's crazy you thought yeah. i don't know what the hell happened yeah um but you went out and you got two high-end guards and now little man you got guards right that's yeah. what you want you, yeah, you, you know, the guards can can hold up the fortress there. Bryce just needs a couple seconds. You went out and got a guy who can get open and Deontay Johnson in a quick amount of time. The reports of Mingo are really positive right now. Was Mingo great last year? No, nothing on the Panthers was great last year. And there's confirmation bias because he didn't play well, sure. but he played a lot, yeah. which is fantastic for him going into this this season of being. Hey, I know nobody wants to hear it, but there could be some decent progression from a guy like uh Jonathan Mingo Mingo. here, but Bryce, I think can't regress anymore. I think Bryce, by all accounts, is is moving up. The Panthers are going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to be a turnaround where we're going to the playoffs here. Not I don't care about the Panthers. I do right now. I'm not saying we as 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 in I'm a Panthers fan. Definitely not going Um, to the playoffs. But (laughs) as you say all this and for for not a great division for people out there giving it the big eye roll like I am. I, I did the same thing when he was talking about the Texans last year. I was like, there's no way that they're going to be anywhere. They're going to, they're on the bottom. They're a terrible organization. I did like the coach they were bringing in. I was, you know, honestly, 50 50 on CJ Stroud. Obviously, it should have been that good 50, the good side of 50, not the bad side of 50. You know, the Panthers, I love the coach they bring in and I love everything they've done so far. So I'm going to be a little bit more receptive to this Panthers feeling that Casey has than I was with the Texans feeling last year. They can only get better from the way they look last year, but I, they've done all the things they need to do to establish that turnaround s- quicker than it would have seemed like it would have taken last year. Right towards the end of the season, the ship was it was sunk. it was well, it was, you, and the, you it was quit, gone. you're done. Yeah, the, the, everything's in shambles. Yeah, and, and and you're out. But now there's new life breathed into this situation. Uh, I think Bryce is pl- looking like he's got some confidence there and looking looking got some pep in his step uh, and that's really you know unfortunately what happens to quarterbacks is you lose confidence you lose hey i got to get rid of this ball i'm getting hit all the time am i not any good you know we've you know yeah and david uh, carr is number one suspect of that of all time sure. right i, I mean, mean your offensive line is not working your your wide receivers know the ball is not getting to them you know so they're right. not running the routes the way they need to route they're not they're not blocking the way they need to block it's not happening and everybody knows it right so would i be buying a bunch of panthers in redraft absolutely not but in dynasty exactly. i think this is a good dip to buy into because i think this situation is going to get 
boost it up a little bit here. Bryce, I'm buying Bryce if I can get him for the right price. I'm not reaching for Bryce, but no. if somebody's looking to get off of Bryce, yeah. I have no problem buying Bryce. Right now he's going at six four. You know, if I'm in the startup and I'm in the seventh round and he's hanging around, I, you know, I, I might once once those rest of those receivers have kind of trickled off of there and, and Jonathan Brooks is out of there, I'll take Bryce Young. Uh, you know, once once we get you know past um, that six seven swath of receivers, maybe Rashi's gone. Got to take Deshaun over, um, right? I mean, you don't have to. I'm taking Deshaun over. I, I, I probably, I probably would take Deshaun over him, but I mean, there's just a good as case that that Deshaun falls apart here sure. over the well, next year, and you know, we talked about it on the last uh, show that we did with the uh, dynasty startup stuff for me. I, I'm I'm buying Bryce Young on a team in a super flex league where I feel good where I could if it, if it didn't go right I'm I'm a, I, I'm not gonna it's not gonna gut my team mm-hmm. if I'm rebuilding I'm not I can't even take the chance on Bryce mm-hmm. because even if everything I like about the Panthers is going right it might not necessarily be Bryce. unless the price is right in a throw in because somebody's like hey you're a rebuilding team I'm gonna give you a little discount on Bryce and that's, I'm and that's I'm, a good point right. that's a good point you n- never say never but I understand what you're saying I have a hard time finding any way in a startup to thinking he's fallen far enough if because he's somebody's going to take him they're going to overvalue the quarterback in my perspective in that spot like the brian thomases and those types of guys all those guys i'm i'm i even saw trey benson on that list there's guys that i want before i'm taking on my team as a dynasty player than before i take uh, deshaun watson or um uh, bryce young but i mean i could easily be wrong and that's fine i just uh, the chance of it going down is higher with him because we already didn't see it look good. And everything you just said is right, and we could see it look good. And there it is. He righted the ship just like that. Yeah, I just you got a guy with a track record who Baker didn't look good, yep. Gino didn't look yep. good, and he made both of those guys yep. get paid and be perennial. They're still starting. Yep. And I think that's exactly what's – I think Bryce is a better prospect than both of those guys, and I think he's going to put Bryce in a good situation to succeed. They went out and got our guy Xavier Leggett from from South Carolina over here, who's you know we'll insert a good clip of him talking because it's the best thing ever, um, <laughs> and he's a stud too. Oh man, I really and truly, man, I don't even think I'm country, man. That's what a lot of folks like to say. Yeah, well, I think I, I speak regular. The hype is kind of building on him too. He was somebody who, because of the cost, I ended up with a decent amount of Xavier Leggett because people. We're just so out on him because there's no way you'd be good because of, of the fifth round. There's no way there should be any context why he was a fifth re- fifth year senior breakout or whatever like that, even though it's all over the place. Again, you know, spend 20 minutes looking up what Xavier Leggett has gone through and you can kind of figure it out a little bit. Why? But now he's this huge, monstrous, fast man who is just eating DBs in practice, mm-hmm. which love to see. So now you have a big physical target and again the reason i'm really into the panthers is because everything seems very deliberate leggett was a guy that they wanted to yeah. fill a certain role and he went out and got the guy to fill out that role right and leggett has looked great in in shorts and, and a helmet and hey that's where we are right now it is what it is but that dude's a specimen out there and i think he's going to be real real uh, real real tough assignment week in week out will he be up and down his rookie year probably so uh, but i think he just started to really come into his own and I think he's about to carry that right over into the NFL because he's he's built like a grown man. And then on top of that, you got another guy like JT Sanders. You know, they, they don't really have the tight end positions wide open. Canales had Kate Otten running one or two with the most snaps of yeah, he any played, tight end he, in the position. He played the most tight ends of any position last right. year, I think. I mean, the most snaps of any. So you ro- you roll out JT Sanders, who was, you know, didn't test well down a little bit on the stock market. But I think he's a really, really good player. And again, the the. Here's a little end zone uh, get, over there for, for JT Sanders getting his feet in. And I just I think when you watch the Texas games, he never did anything super sexy. He just made plays when they needed plays. And that was a team loaded with A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy with two first round picks. And a lot of times in the big spots, it was him getting it done for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what I like about Sanders. He's he, no, he doesn't check some of the RAS score boxes. He didn't check, but it's okay. Every once in a while, you got to bet on some outliers, and he's cheap enough right now to bet on him. And uh, if you're going to give him the opportunity to be out there that much, I'm not saying he will be. Maybe it'll be Tremble. I don't know. But Tremble's had a couple of shots, and they just picked JT Sanders to come out there. I like and it. Kate Otten, by the end of last season, was really starting to come around and get a role to find. I'd have been. I'll see, be interesting to see where Kate Otten picks up this last right. season. But if Canales was there for another season, I think Kate Otten's hype would be even 
higher than uh, there's not a whole lot of Kate Otten hype, but if you know, you know, some people are are, right, are, right. are, are pumping up for uh, um, old uh, Otten there. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. A lot of liking a lot of the Panthers right now. Gave Mingo a little shout out. And then of course you got David Tepper over here with just a you know a comical look on the sidelines so <laughs> had, to, had to throw a little a little tepper shade in there had to look at this guy he's like who's who's who, who's talking shit <laughs> who's who, who, who could i throw out of here <laughs> who needs to get tall <laughs> yeah who am i gonna throw a beer on you you need to get tall <laughs> is it you is That's it you, you? let's see I security gotta, look at him Look at it. Just smug. A, you can tell he just meddles in everything. Just, just smug. Just, he's a meddler. Just Micromanaging. <laughs> Ugh. Get him out of here. Yeah. All right. But Jen, you do. You get Jonathan Brooks. Chuba's going to have a role. Brooks is not going to. You know. So I, I just Good. love the picks. Keep love Brooks where they're going. The you got to keep Brooks off the field halfway through the season. We'll see Chuba and and, uh, and Miles um, coming at you. And again, don't think the Panthers are going to light the world on fire, but. I think you're going to see big improvements all over the place. All right, let's let's roll over to the Chiefs. Then we got two more items, and we'll get out of here. A lot to be made on Xavier Worthy, right? First couple of days, boy, oh, boy, is he just smoking fools. Sure. Just getting open all over the place, down the field. And, you know, it's it's funny. You know, we, we, we've been talking about this for a little while here, about how well, it would be interesting to see. They signed Hollywood to see what they do in the draft. Can they bring this vertical passing game back? Well, after the draft, that's all we've been talking about. It. This we 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 had uh, Mahomes playing as a point guard, playing with the worst surrounding cast that we've seen in a while. A rookie is your best wide receiver last year, and it was plain as day. Yeah, took eight weeks to get there, but we got there, uh, and he he was instrumental in everything that they did. But look, Xavier Worthy just you know over the top. Now you know Xavier is really fast and can get lumped into the John Ross category. Them boys ain't the same. This is not the same guy. This is a This is a guy who can actually play the receiver position. He can actually do, but he can also do that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you had a, a chiefs team who's was hanging their hat on their defense last year, man. So if you know, you might, you lost Snead, or you traded Snead or whatever, but I don't think you lost a whole lot of pieces. You got a really young core. The chiefs are, are about to be a real problem. Sure, they you, are. you bring back that, this. That, you bring back time, Hollywood and the two-time returning champs are about to be a problem. That, that's, isn't it ridiculous? Yeah, like you, you just you bring back you know Hollywood or you bring Hollywood in, you bring Worthy in, so now you can actually now now everybody can't get down on you, and people were already getting down. They can't stay in that shell. You're going to take the top off in a bunch of different variations here. Well, the Chiefs might not, also do this though, right? Like, uh, look at that. Yeah, go ahead with that. Ragdolled. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the Chiefs weren't scaring anybody last year in the in the season. They just went except through. for Pat. You knew that Patrick Mahomes could get you at any point. But then once they got in the postseason, nobody wanted right. to play him. No, you didn't want to play him. The D and because was so they damn could beat good. you. They could beat and you. The D was no, and I feel like <laughs> nobody gave it any love. The D was well, so good damn D. good. Um, and they're going to be good again, man. Spags is awesome, and 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 the the uh, sort of advantage that the Chiefs almost have is Spags already been in the head coach. It doesn't seem like anybody's really all that interested in bringing Spags back as a head coach. Maybe He's, Spags has no interest in going and, anywhere. And maybe He's he stacking up but rings that, right now. What an advantage because right. all these other D coordinators. And, and you see the Niners leave all the time. You saw yeah. Mike McDonald, you know, build this ridiculous the Ravens, defense on going the Ravens. The now getting the head, you know, so uh, you know, you see the good ones really leave, and what an advantage that is for the Chiefs. But it's a good point. You know, going back to you know Xavier Worthy, like you said, getting getting ragdolled there on that clip you played. Like, look, when you play the clip, it doesn't even look like uh, the first ragdolling is even legal. Like, it doesn't even look like yeah. the ball snapped at that point in time, right? You know, he he gets he gets bowled over, then he stands up, and then he gets hit again. Like, barely looks like the play's off and running, and then he's getting knocked down to the ground, and you know, like that <laughs> that looks like. Eh, I'm not really sure if you're allowed to touch him just quite when you touched him. Yeah. Um, and then he gets hit again touch him? by a linebacker right there. Um, and, and hey, look, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. He is 165 pounds. But like if we're still really talking about this and you are still using this to uh, dis, uh, downplay a, a player, like what? You, just catch up, Bo. You're, you're getting lapped because Tank Dell's fucking good. A Chan's fucking good. Nobody Devonta gives a shit about Smith. Devonta Smith. Yeah. How good he's about to be in a Keenan Allen type role with with 
his new coordinator and Kellen Moore. Well, like, like you said, if, if if Xavier Worthy went to a team where they were still banging their head on the wall, that yeah, might if, be different. If he, if he goes to the Saints, you're like, eh, I'm not that interested in Xavier Worthy. Well, this year he will see. But if they were, if he was on uh, the d- Saints last year with that. Either doesn't even matter, right? Yeah, right. But they're, they are bringing in a, off the, a 49ers disciple. So we'll see what happens right. with the Saints the, offense. The motion is going to go up. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. The Chiefs trade up in the first round to get him to make sure they get him before the Bills can get him. And then to fill the need along with their Hollywood Brown addition, like you said. So if, if, if any team can put Xavier Worthy in the spot that he needs to be in consistently, it's the Chiefs. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like if he, if he, goes, if he goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars from a few years ago right. or he goes to the Patriots or he goes to the Saints where you're like, that offense, you don't like it. But Andy Reid. Oh, that's a great call. If he it, went to the Patriots right now, I'd be like, oh, man, I'm that good. sucks for work. Right. It's not yeah. great. We're good, not we don't call. know what's what's happened. But Andy Reid is, is not going to look if you, Xavier Worthy played more on the outside than he did in the slot. But he played some slot at Texas Two two parts of this thing. He went to Texas. Right. So it's not like he wasn't like when he went and played Alabama, he's got highlight plays against Alabama, Bo. Mm -hmm. I I understand that the NFL has got a bunch of guys that are as good as the best players on Alabama, but it's not like he was playing at Ball State at 165 pounds. He's playing at fucking Texas at 165 pounds. Right. So relax. And looking ridiculous. And looking and looking broke out as a freshman. Probably it was 150 pounds (laughs) at that point. Yeah. Um, so let's pump the brakes a little bit there. And then to back to the read thing, like you're do, you would be doing a giant disservice to Xavier worthy by putting him in the X and leaving him there and not putting him in motion. That's and moving. And anyway. why in the world would Andy Reed, who is one of the best offensive geniuses in this league do that? It makes no sense. He doesn't, he do needs that. to be in motion. He needs to be moving all over the place. Get him off. And you better fucking, you better ragdoll him if you get your hands on him. Cause if you don't, that's six. Yeah. You know, and they, they, they know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm extremely interested to see how that goes. And it may start slow for Worthy because Andy's a slow starter with the rookies. We'll see what happens with Rashi Well, you Rice. said Rasheed Rice was the best receiver last year. Even the first six, seven weeks, like he was the best on like a uh, yards per route run. Oh, he just sure. wasn't running all the routes right. yet. You know, so he was the right. best receiver they had from week one. They just weren't giving him the opportunity to show it. Right. So. You know, let's let you know. We 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 had some worthy love. We got some worthy hate. We we went went everything in between, and you know, still very high on worthy. I think it's a great landing spot. It's 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 a great marriage. Uh, Chiefs, just it's a bummer. What are you doing, Bills? What are you doing? You yeah. traded. You mm-hmm. traded. <laughs> like you, the things that they didn't have, you let them collect. I don't know. But then you got Rashi, who we don't know where the. But this is probably one of the best buys in all of fantasy right now, love right? It. You can hate on Rashi. You might not like what he does, think he's an idiot, whatever. He's probably getting suspended in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's two, maybe it's four, maybe it's six, maybe it's eight. No it's idea. Not going to be the whole year. Right. But this guy just absolutely slated as a rookie. Him and Pat already have some chemistry. Did a lot of work underneath, but he can take the top off. We saw it at SMU, get down the field. Uh, so he can, he can, he's kind of could do your jack of all trades. And, and, you know, what happens when Kelsey leaves when that all that underneath stuff is gone? There you go. Is, is Rice not going to try to pick up right where, you know, it's going to, this obviously it's Kelsey, man. But yeah. like you, Kelsey's so good at all that underneath shit. You don't think Rashi, right? And they already did some of it with him. And, and look, they manufacture touch, say whatever you want. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Um, but Rashi was great last year. And then real quick, going back to Xavier Worthy, Andy Reid had to show him Jackson Bow. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Or, you know, like, <laughs> We're good. I mean, well, in Dynasty, MVS had w- would have been way better if he could have caught the ball a few times. True. <laughs> well, like in in Dynasty, the the suspension for Rasheed Rice is means nothing for you. It really. it means he's a good trade target. It, it makes people his are price react cheaper, about it, you know? right? So right. there's no reason not to be trying to gather him on as many rosters as possible. Yeah, for so as cheap as possible. I'm not saying go out there and overpay for Rasheed Rice, but if you can catch a player, I mean, you know, catch a a, a manager who isn't where they should be because of the suspension or especially like, Hey, a win now team. And like, this is my third best or my second best receiver. And if he's missing half the season, that's really going to put me in a bad spot. If you can swap something and put him on your team. I've been thinking about that for a while now. Like I, they probably, they, they're going to try to replace Kelsey when it happens. But if Rasheed Rice is still on the team, because if, you know, if Kelsey plays two more years, who knows if they even can resign Rasheed right. Rice. But if he's around, they're, the dink and the dunk is still going to be, it's almost like Mahomes mastered that too now. Right. You know what I mean? Well, it's, he's, he's it's just so elusive too that it's just even all he's the off schedule stuff. So, right. It's alive for so they, long. Yeah. And, and, and as, as Mahomes gets older and starts losing a little bit of his 
you know, knee jerk athleticism, that dink and dunk is always going to be able to keep him upright. You know, hey, get right. it out of my hand. It's, well, he it, had to learn how to play point guard there for a it, minute, it, right? That's what I mean. Like, is, is Worthy streaking open? No. Okay, boom. Throw it out. Right. Get it out. Get rid of it. Is, right. is, and I don't know if Hollywood's on a one-year deal. He's going to get paid probably pretty good money after this if he can stay healthy. Is it with the Chiefs? Who knows? But Rasheed Rice working that short, the intermediate, catching Pat PPR love. Yeah. And yeah. Before we close up shop on the Chiefs, and then I got two more items before we close up shop in general. Just want to throw a little Pacheco love because, you know, I, I'm always interested in trying to sell Pacheco a little bit. He's usually on a sell list for me. Uh, but, you know, it's only if you can get the right value for him. But, you know, Pacheco's out here just on a really good offense in a really good system. Andy Reid just came out and said that, you know, he just keeps getting better uh, in every situation. The hands are good. The route running's good. Uh, he, he just continues to improve. Uh, he's, he's getting a little, he's going to be a little old when he's up for that first contract. So it's going to be interesting how that kind of plays out uh, because he was an, an older player coming out. I think he'll be like 26 or 27 when he is able to get a contract. So it's a bit of a bummer. I could, see a, home, I could see a hometown discount for Pacheco here. Like, hey, just keep me on. Let me keep stacking rings with Mahomes and and not get quite as much money as I, I may or may not get it anywhere else anyway and these guys brought me in gave me the chance i got two right. rings or and i could see i could see pacheco actually hanging out for a while and, and he you know pacheco gets you know the the draft capital a little better and people are probably way he's probably a, a much more coveted asset now again a little bit older throughout the career a, a really really solid player and, and you're not necessarily screwing it up if you get pacheco on the team right and I just wanted to give him a little shine here because I don't, I, th I think down the stretch and in the playoffs, he was, he was catching say, a lot of balls. Yeah, Jay Wayne, go up to the, uh, Jay Wayne's showing us right now, best editor in the game. He's showing us the game log for Pacheco. Go show us the playoffs. It's at the top of that list right there. Show us what he did. Is it not in that list? No, normally on sleeper, it's the playoffs are at the top. Um, yeah, but he had he had good receiving numbers, I believe, in the in the playoffs. So I don't I don't know where I don't that know is, why it's not there. And, and you can, it shows the differently on the. You can probably insert the computer phone and on the phone. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can you. probably insert the quote of of Andy Reid talking about Pacheco and and how he asked about Jarek McKinnon being the third down back, I believe, and and he gave Pacheco a bunch of flowers. Yeah, no, he's ready to be able to do all that. He <clears throat> he's good with the protections. He's good with the technique and fundamentals. Um, he can run all the routes. He's got great hands. So he, he's, he can do that. Um, you know, Clyde can do that. I mean, we've got guys that can step in there and do it. Yeah. I'm not necessarily throwing shade at Pacheco on this, but he does make a lot of the sell lists for me uh, because, you know, I, I don't hate getting rid of him and moving off him if I could upgrade. If I could move Pacheco for Brooks, I, I probably would do that right now still. Oh yeah, I would do that because you get going. You're getting that, so much younger. That younger guy going to Canales, but in the in the playoffs when they had to win and the Chiefs were no longer on cruise control just to get to the playoffs because they were trying to go repeat champs. He gets 14.8 fantasy points, 18 in the division against Buffalo, 18.2 against the Ravens. Um, drops down to 12 against San Fran because that was a little bit different of a game. And actually, he caught the most balls there, so he had no like hardly any rushing and mm -hmm. and, and didn't have the TDs, but. You know, 14, 18, 18 in three straight games where they had to have the have the victory to keep playing, obviously. So just, you know, 24 carries, 15 carries, 24 carries for 68 yards and a touch against that hard Ravens defense. Mm. When the team needed it, they were they had him down the stretch. Yeah, no, I've, I've I, you know, wanted to want to give him a little love there. All right. Let's get off the Chiefs here for a second. Let's move on to. A favorite of this show, and we've been we've been caping for this guy for a while, and all the stuff that has been cycled through, and one of our own, and in a show that that we just did of of Austin Abbott. Shout out to Austin, going to be gone for a minute here, uh, but we didn't fire him. He's 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 still going to be on the show, uh, just going to Italy, doing some um, traveling, doing some traveling. Jamison Williams, man, you know, like I said, all these people are circling back on all the shit that they threw at him year one, and all these thresholds of, you know guys not hitting on where they're supposed to be and and the percentage of working out and yada yada but there's you're missing all the fucking context man yeah. you're missing it all stop you can't put Jamison Williams in that box that's the problem with your stupid fucking boxes <laughs> some people don't fit in them relax yeah so Jamison Williams didn't really play his first year he shouldn't have he was injured he was their first round draft pick they said it off the on the onset of the year that he's basically not going to play all that much and he didn't yeah, towards ACL in the college championship. Right. Game. And so the next year he comes in, was having an suspended. okay camp. Then he gets hurt and suspended. 
you know, the gambling suspension is re- kind of ridiculous right. well, the that, way it that, played out. But obviously, a, a coach like a coach like Dan Campbell, you get suspended for anything. It, whether it's that's probably the most irrelevant part of way to get suspended for that twenty four months. The way the NFL was trying to handle in the gamble thing because they're getting paid all this money from DraftKings and stuff like that. They're just NFL's making so much money and they don't know how to try to keep it away from the actual games and the players because they don't want to get right. in trouble like that. So they could, you know, really just slapping these boys all over the place with these, you know, suspensions that Calvin Ridley obviously got crushed for a whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dan Campbell's not going to like that no matter what. Right. So no, but, you, but you go into doghouse, you get suspended, you're not around on the teams who's having, I'm, you know, I'm a Lion fan. So the team is having a come up, you know. Last year, this was like, all right, we're actually going to go get W's this year. Because two years ago, his rookie year when he was coming off the injury, they were, quote, unquote, supposed to be good now, and they started one and six. Right. But they finished strong and keeping the Packers out of the playoffs and stuff like that, just having showing that grit that they brought into 2023, which ended up going to a 17-point lead in the NFC Championship game, almost made the Super Bowl. So you're not going to get in a, in a team that's literally transitioning that hard, that fast, uh, to be able to just plug and play as a as a young receiver who hasn't been around for hardly anything yet, yeah. you're not just going to jump back in there after your suspension. You know, you're not. They're not going to pull a player off the team who's off the field who's been there for those first six weeks, helping turn the ship around. Right. And then because you weren't there first year, and then you got suspended and hurt second year. But when you did get back on the field a little bit after a little bit after a little bit, you're making a play here, a big play here, a big time play that nobody else on the team is really making. Right. And I mean, elect- Gibbs made some electric plays, and St. Brown's one of the, you know, obviously the heart and soul of the team. But Jamison Williams is the top, you know, second fastest guy on Madden ratings for a reason. Yeah. He's a fast, fast man. Right. And when the ball in his hands, he's running away from fast men. Right. All right, well, let's roll the clip. This is Ben Johnson. There's another clip of, of Campbell talking about him, but you know, here, here's a little clip of, of them boys just talking about Jamison Williams a little bit. Ben, from the outside looking in, one guy who's, who's looked really much more comfortable within your offense is, is Jamison Williams. Have you noticed that as well? Obviously going to be asked to have a bigger role this year, but just from the outside looking in, he looks like he's kind of really kind of stepping into his own. Yeah, we, we started feeling it towards the end of last year, and uh, – He's taken that to another level in the springtime and so far here in training camp. Um, he prides himself on bringing some juice to the offense, and we certainly feel it out there, both in the in the passing game, making explosive plays, but he also wants to be a dynamic uh, blocker as well, which, which we really value. So um, things have started to slow down mentally for him. Uh, we've locked him into a couple spots, and as a result, his route trees kind of grown it's developed and uh in his mind there's nothing he can't do and and so far we we really haven't seen that either I haven't seen anything that that he can't do so it's it's been fun look we're you know just like big co laid out a little bit there we 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 saw him be injured and then we saw him in year two come off the suspension and then at the end of the season he started doing we talked about this last year he started doing all the little things that that need to be done for a guy like Jamison Williams to get out of the doghouse, to start Mm -hmm. getting into guys like Dan Campbell's good side. And, and you just, he wanted to be a blocker. One of the main things you saw was Jamison Williams running down the field and making blocks to spring the running backs. Right. You started seeing all those things come together in the NFC championship. You see an end around to start the game. uh, And he scores. That's how electric he is. Like, you haven't even gotten a chance to see this guy blossom yet. Look, he was he was probably a, a slight project and a little injured. And now you've been seeing him kind of buying into this culture, being a part of this culture. And now they've Campbell, who do, who, who wouldn't stamp him as their WR2 if he didn't fucking earn it. Mm-hmm. And he did. And now you're about to come out. And if Jamison Williams can catch the football, you're about to see some explosive, explosive plays from Jamison Williams and he they need it just like they say like Amon Ross St. Brown is awesome and and you know he does a lot but they need a guy like Jamison Williams like think of how much better Laporta and Jamison Williams or and and St. Brown and Gibbs can be attacking that middle of the field shorter mid stuff if Jamison Williams can be attacking deep here it doesn't even need to do it a lot because Jamison is I know everybody just has him knocked down as this speed merchant but he's not just that he's he he's so electric like he did like if Bama has him in that game, they win. He most can likely. be he's he's like he can be Jalen Waddle. Right. There's no reason he's not Jalen Waddle. The only thing is is he's not in a system that would be carving out 
plays like that from McDaniel. But, but we're at, we're in one of the better, most more coveted OCs, and who just stuck around Completely for one agree. more year. So this is this is best case scenario for Jamison Williams, and he's it's not like he's in the seventh round, sixth round, or fifth round. He's like and in Dynasty, he's a tenth, eleventh, twelfth round pick. God, what are we talking about? Like I don't really like you're ju- you were ju- you're just down on him and you're staying down on him and now you're doubling down on shit that shouldn't even be doubled down on because it doesn't it, it shouldn't even count towards what Jamison Williams has been doing and how he's been operating because of some unfortunate circumstances some self imposed some not there you go it, you know I don't expect him to come out and uh, and you should like you said the biggest thing here is the is the pur- purchase price is ten tenth round. Right late, when late the, ten, late mid mid to late, 10. and I got him in the eleventh or twelfth the other day. So yeah. you know, if the first the first mock draft that we did this this year this rookie cycle, um, when we got done and hey, anybody got anything today? What, who's who's the like? Jamis and Williams in the tenth round. Give me all of them. Right. Like that was February, right? And it's like it's he hasn't gone up. If anything, Jay he's dropped a half a round. So I'm I'm. I don't expect him to come out here and and get eight targets a game. If I don't, but in that system, in that in that offense, there's a lot of good parts. And if nothing else, like you said, he's doing the blocking. So you got a, a, a wide receiver on the team who's a heart and soul in St. Brown, and St. Brown's making thirty million dollars a year. And what does he do? He blocks his tail off. Right. So like that's a great mentor type. So if Jamison Williams wants to be part of this team, and the best player we got over here ain't no bigger than me, you know, is blocking his tail off. Jamison, you got to go block, and if he's right. blocking, that's that means right. He's, well, that's what I'm saying. He's like, on the field. You're, Dan Campbell's not just going to put you in there because they've drafted you in the fucking first round, man. Exactly. He's just not. Exactly. And and you can make fun of Dan Campbell all you want. The joke's on you, man. The it's joke is on you at this point. Train left if, station, all right. If you still don't, you know, but biting kneecaps or whatever, you know, ha ha ha. He's I not still he, never. He's get not that. your like, cup of tea mean? or whatever. But like. Bo, he's turned that culture completely around. Them boys love him, and he's he, he's not putting you out there if he's not bought into what the hell you're doing. I like it. And that. I just, that to me, and, and mixed with the explosive, and then on top of that, I don't know. If he's not a top five play caller in the league, he's in the top eight or ten, Johnson? Ben Johnson. Oh, for sure. And, he's up there. You know, so... I just what what a fun situation. The price is, is cheap enough. The explosion and the offense that he could be in. The, it's wide open. It's St. Brown and it's Laporta, and then Gibbs will catch some balls. You right. know, and then who else? Mm-hmm. You know, DPJ. Uh, like mm-hmm. you know, I, I honestly, you know. So I just I just feel like there's a good mixture here to see some explosion. And and hey, if you're if you're a hater, you're gonna probably get a window to sell Jameson and and maybe maybe he'll be. Um, you know, turn into a Kadarius Tony type player where you're always holding and he never turns into anything. But or he could, I mean, he's not going to be with Jared Golf for much longer. They just paid Golf. They paid. They got up. They're going to end up paying Laporta and Gibbs, and they got and they just paid Monroe St. Brown thirty million, and they got to pay Hutchinson a defensive lineman, yeah. and they can only hope well, they to keep get, him for three more years. I think. I don't know if they're keeping three more years. This well, is the third they, year. Yeah, but they could fifth year option him because he's a first round pick. That's only one more. Well, that's three. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. right. So, I mean, I guess that's a, yeah, that's a long time. Three that's enough to, to, you know. That's, right? He's with golf for three more years. That, <laughs> right. Yeah, if he does get a fifth-year option, which m- most people don't these if, days. If he's playing well, then he's either going to want a contract or, you know. But, uh, you know, I just – this seems like a good recipe for a, to take a shot and to, to be – to turn your nose up at it because of your, you're putting – because he didn't check some boxes of he these other guys because rookie year. You, you can't just, be any good. You just that's it. You didn't care about the, the only any sort of context. About. Like, it's the dumbest shit ever. Like, that's so stupid. Um, it, if it was only that easy. Right. But it's not. Like, um, you can make it that easy, I guess. Like, you know? Yeah. You can – You're going to miss though. the outliers. It's lazy. All right, one more. We got a, We got a nice little Chase Brown clip for your pleasure uh, out there. Out there doing some work. The offensive lineman Orlando Brown maybe was out there giving him his flowers as well, saying, "You know, this guy. If, he's a, if you're a fantasy football guy, this guy should be uh, on the top of the list of the top running backs in the league because he's explosive and he's hard to deal with." Um, Chase Brown is is. Uh, you know, in an open competition to potentially be a one A, the big the big difference between these two guys are is Chase Brown can hit home runs. Oh, for sure. Chase Brown's got speed and explosion, and he's a really underrated receiver. Moss is a good player. Moss is good enough to keep this rotation interesting for a little while. But if if Brown keeps making really good plays in preseason and throughout training camp and stays healthy, you're gonna have a hard time keeping him off the field more than Moss because Moss is. You know, certainly limited. I think in, in the upside that he can bring you, he can, he can bring you 
uh, stability. And we saw the numbers of, of Moss out of the shotgun last year. And we presume that, that the Bengals, even though losing their OC, are going to stay in a lot more shotgun. Um, and Moss operated well out of that position last year. And um, that's not a shot on Moss. But I think Chase Brown is, is, is going to give them something that they don't have. Uh, 5'10", 211. So, you know, built well, handled the load at Iowa or at Illinois. So, I, you know, I don't feel like there's any... You know, how can this guy do it? Is he too small? Yada, yada. He's explosive, and there's I think there's good rushing upside. We saw some of those explosive plays last year, and I think it just grows into this year. So Chase Brown, I think, moving on up. The boys in the locker room are liking him. The coaches are, are talking him up a little bit. So Chase Brown on the up and up. Chase is so much fun. Like, he, I've traded it off the top of my head. I know I've traded for him three times, one of them in, a, in the Pleasure Town League mm-hmm. where we got him together in that one, in that in that trade. I've traded for him three times this off season. The talking points on him are so cool because in one one side of the of the equation is he had like two third down snaps last year as a rookie mm-hmm. on a good team with a great quarterback who and was hurt ex- and, and a veteran good running back and Joe Mixon and the other guy Samaj P Ryan got to the other parts of the snaps. So like he didn't play on third down last year, and some people are saying he's going to be a great third. You know he can catch well. And then, but the, on the other side, it's like, all right, well, this, you know, he got 30 carries in a game for in, in, in college, like completely used as a workhorse. Like you said, carried the load for in Illinois. So like 210 pounds, not 188 pounds, mm-hmm. you know, big enough to handle a load fast enough to break plays off. He's gone and played uh, or, or gone in this wide receiver camp this year with this. And I can't remember the name of the guy like this. He's been training with this wide receiver guru. So if he can get in there and add to the passing game on this team, with a healthy Joe Burrow, hopefully that's all, that's all we need for Cincinnati. Right. That's right. all Cincinnati needs. It doesn't matter. They could find a running back off the street week one. If they had, if Joe Burrow was healthy, that's what they would sign up for. But if, if Chase Brown, uh, yes, Zach Moss, the the uh, guys from Underdog dug it up. They he he plays well out of shotgun. Okay, he Zach Moss could do really really well running out of shotgun for the Bengals this year. So I'm not saying Chase Brown's going to make come in here and the consist like you said he's Moss is going to give these guys consistency in the running back position. But what he cannot give them is some things that Brown can give them. And if Brown can give them some of that consistency too. That's the problem for Zach Moss, right. and it, and it's probably not even in the first six weeks, probably not going to no, separate, right? You know, but it, we're talking so dynasty that in the Discord here. today, basically. Like it's it's gonna it, Moss yeah. is good enough to keep that mix going for a little for right. for a few weeks, right? Right, to, because Moss is 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 twenty six, twenty seven years old now. He's a he's been around the block a while. Like Chase Brown, second year, didn't play any third down snaps last year. Wide receiver camp. Let's see what he, you know, just even if it's it make us an explosive place here in dynasty. This is the way, this is how you want to get these guys on your team right now while he's affordable. Right. Because once he, once the, we're called, we call them escalators. Right. Right. Once the Bengals decide that he can be that guy. Escalators can never be broke. They can only become stairs. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Shout out Astute, to RIP uh, Mitch Hedberg. Astute observation, Mitch. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It, it, Escalator down, temporarily stairs. Sorry for the convenience. <laughs> yeah. Well, that 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 will give you some floor. It's a heroin chase. observation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. So, stock up Chase Brown and go get him while you can afford him. Yeah. All right. Last last note, I, a bonus overtime here. I want to get a little Romeo dubs on this one. There's a bunch more that we have on this page, but we can't get to them. Um, I should have saved the tweet and I don't know who it's from. And it's it's not I'm not trying to bash the guy who the tweet it is because it's just kind of how people how he operates in the fantasy space operate. And I think that's mainly the problem. Uh, but <laughs> um, Romeo dubs is obviously coming out here just getting all the flowers in camp. Right. Yeah. They love him. Love video. loves him. He loves love. We love love. Like actual like love, not Jordan love. We love love around here. Um, Big hearts. <laughs> but the fact that that you know the, the tweet was something along the line, not understanding the ADP, and I think he was mostly talking best ball or redraft, or I'm not sure. And we're playing dynasty, and that's the problem of this time of year is you see tweets sure. and you're not sure exactly what situation you're talking about. But he was basically saying. 
you know, one of the one of the most the, the original sayings of make this to make sense. Like because yeah. everybody's so fucking original out there. They use the same six fucking phrases. It drives me insane. Like, oh, dude, you're so cool. You're so original. Imagine thinking. Oh, stop it. The Romeo Doves wasn't good. Um, but. He was basically saying he could doesn't understand why why you're justifying any of the Romeo Dub stuff and justifying the ADP and look at look at look at what he's done. Look at his track record over the first two years in the season as if that's it. Case closed. Hey, I got these numbers in front of me and they say this, and there's no way anything could ever fucking change. <laughs> the dumbest approach you could ever have, man. It's so stupid. Like, have you watched them boys play ball? And I know I know these kind of guys hate people saying this kind of shit. They hate it. But if you actually watch them play, Jordan Love and Romeo Dubs have had a connection through preseason's uh, past. In the playoffs this year, they had a great connection. Crushed and there's it. been certain times where they've been rolling. Now, Romeo has been hurt. And it also took a little while for the Packers to figure out how to play Love and how Love to fit in this Packers system as things got rolling. But... Just to come out here and make the assumption of, of showing the numbers of what Romeo Dubs has been doing, that case closed, there's no way that this guy could get any better, is is just the dumbest shit ever. And then I see it so often that you just, you present what has happened, and then you're just like, oh, case closed. Like, there isn't one of these guys, like, who, I, I wish I could get his name, because I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm not hating on him personally. I'm mostly just talking about the process of, of how this works a lot of times. But none of those guys last year were walking <laughs> around saying that Nico Collins was going to be a thing. And every one of them loves Nico Collins now. You shouldn't be allowed. He's not draftable now. He's, he's out all, for you. He's, he's not even you in your queue. Him. You can't because put him in your queue. Because he sucked. Because he's do, he did the same. You could draft him. Just don't tell people about it. Right. Him. Because he sucked, and there's no way he could be good. Don't and, even put and, him in your and queue. You were, anybody who said anything about Nico Collins maybe breaking out in the third year, you were telling everybody that person was an idiot. And it's like, because nothing can change. Situations can't change. Players can't get better. Offenses can't change. Offenses, I just, it's, it's a terrible approach and a terrible way to look at things. So stop biting into that just hook, line, and sinker. You can use it as clues and pieces and parts to the puzzle, but there's it's all pieces of context to figure different things out. Con con what? Context? Well, Jay Wayne just showed us a, a, a number on for Romeo Dubs that said last year he played 17 games, so he played them all. He caught 60-something. He caught 59 balls for uh, 675 yards and eight touchdowns, and that that doesn't include the playoff games where he slayed. Yeah, and in the, in the context of Jordan Love comes in and takes over as the Aaron Rodgers replacement, and the Packers can only hope he's even kind of good, and he goes from kind of good to ridiculous, right? And now he's getting fifty million dollars a year because of it, and now they got a wide receiver core that's super young and needs to be sorted out. But right. Jaden Reed is not an outside X receiver. Christian Watson is not a guaranteed hamstring pull away. Them boys yeah. are trying to figure out how to even up hamstrings over there. I've, I've, Christian Watson, to me, is is like one of my favorite upside players. Sure. But like we, there's nothing guaranteed there other than the four games that he's going to play is going to be electric. Mm -hmm. And if he plays 15 games, that's when Christian Watson becomes a, a league winner type player. But Romeo Dubs is on the field playing. Right. right. You know, and of course, you know, Dontavian Wicks is coming on. But that you if stock up Jordan Love, you stock up everybody. Right. But like Dubs is Dubs is is getting snaps, and there might there's going to be a lot of times where he's just out there kind of blocking and running decoys. But there's also there's a lot of upside in the offense. Right. And have we not ever seen? Obviously, we know Watson's an injury risk. What if Jaden Reed goes down? Well, that's you, you know, know like what what, what we, we the Tucker Crafts. Peck isn't even attached right now, you know. Right. So we already got. We saw Musgrave go down. We saw yeah Christian Watson go down. We saw you know. And you're not paying anything for the guy. Well, that's that's what that, I was, that, that was my next point. Was is that he like, in the round eight? Is he round eight? No, he's not round eight. Right. Was he round 12? 12 eight. There 12 you go. eight. 12 eight. About sometimes you see him hanging around 13, 14th round because he just gets skipped over because somebody wanted Roman Wilson or Burton or you know whomever. The cost is is pretty cheap palatable like, i don't want to like Jaden reed's the guy who i'm it's, it's not that i don't like Jaden reed but like he's the seventh round guy who you right. know hey it has to the the storm has to hit perfectly for me to go yeah i'll take Jaden reed here exactly um where i'm not necessarily looking to draft like draft Jaden reed around early because i gotta get him exactly um 
you and, get, beca- you and because and it's, not, it's not a, it's not a slight on Jaden Reed. It's because the Packers offense, just like you said, we don't exactly know who's going to be the guy. But I'll take the shot on Romeo Dubs, who has had points where he's been the guy with Jordan Love, and they have some rapport. Yeah. Um, in and the then, 12th round. In the 12th round. So cost is 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 You're is getting a piece negligible. of the offense that you know is going to be on the field. Right. He, he plays a position that's going to keep him on the field. He, he, here's an Adam Levitan tweet with looking at Packers wide receivers usage only when Christian Watson played last season. I know where this is going including already. Playoff. Three wide receiver sets. Jaden Reed, 90%. Romeo Dubs, 83%. Christian Watson, 75%. Jatavion Wicks, 38%. Two wide receiver sets. Romeo Dubs, 78%. Christian Watson, uh 69% Wicks, uh, 33%. Jaden Reed, 3%. Mm-hmm. Um, playoff routes run, Romeo Dubs, 37. Jaden Reed, 34. Christian Watson, 23. Wicks, 21. Bo Melton, 12. Dubs is in the top of all those. Dubs is in there. Now, you could look at that as a negative and say, well, he was out there playing a bunch, and, he, and look what he did. He, you know, this is all Bo. What I'm saying is, is there's no way that this could be a 10 touchdown thousand yard season from fucking Romeo Dubs. There's no way that that could happen. Well, he had eight last year, so it's going to be some regression or, <laughs> or the Packers don't suck for six weeks, you yeah. know, and there's a right. uh, progression in the amount of touchdowns uh, Jordan Love set, progression. Uh, throws. So both basically, I just, you know, this is the part that really bothers me about the analytical side of things is that like we look at they look a lot of them look at a picture and go, well, this is it. Here it is. This, this fit. And just kind of like we talked about Jamison Williams. And I love the analytical side of things. And it's, I'm not anti-analytics by any means. It's all a part of the puzzle. Give me all the information. But I need like three of y'all. Mm-hmm. I need three well, of y'all to tell me the right numbers that I'm supposed to be looking at. The thing yeah, is, I don't is have it, space for 300 of you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them act so staunchly towards what you know their numbers are saying. But in the end, their goal is, is a hit rate. Of a, of a wide receiver, too. One season of being a top right. 24 wide receiver. The parameters that are set are a little silly. And the percentage is right. They're trying to get, like, you know, 55% right of the time. Which, you know, if, if you do that all the time, then you're going to win against the house. But, like, you're missing out. You know? It's just, like, it's, well, it's not just, that much of a gain. It's not that. You don't need to bet on every outlier. That's not what I'm saying. Right. You need to do the work and then bet on a few outliers your, each year. So outlier. each year you could smash one. Like, yeah. look who we're, we're probably, I bet, I, I would wonder how many teams in the playoffs last year had Nico Collins and Kyron Williams on them last year. Two guys go, yeah. that were dead to every single person of that ilk. Yeah. Dead. Ilk? Cloth. Cut from that cloth or, you know, how you, ilk is a, you know. Decent, hey. decent word. Hey, you asked, and he came back with cut from the cloth. He gave you, know. you another example. <laughs> What's Romeo Dubs' birthday? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, it's eight seven something. That's my birthday. Oh. Eight seven plus he wears eighty seven. So I don't know. okay, eight okay. seven. Yeah. I got a birthday. I'm a bit of a up. numerologist. He's a Sagittarius. <laughs> 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 Romeo he? Dubs, let's go. Well, I have no idea. Chris Romeo Chris. Dubs, let's go. <laughs> <Chris>. <laughs> Christian Watson in the in the, in the tenth round and Romeo Dubs in the tenth round take them both. So as as uh, uh, could as, take Watson as Memphis say good guy bad tweet. I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's good. I'm sure he's he he puts out some good stuff and and builds some winners. It's not I don't winners. I'm not hating on on the man itself. I'm hating on some of the process. And he could certainly come in here and hate on some of my process. But I try to take the whole thing in mm-hmm. rather than I bet just you do. only well you know <laughs> if it fits. Um, no hetero. So. But I, you know, I just, I just wanted to uh, throw those out there. So, so two guys, a lot of fun to close the show. We're ha- we're having some fun here. It's not that serious. I'm not really angry at anybody. Oh, we got winners, winners. But he's so upset. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh, this is the best time. This the only thing that's better than this is the this real game of football that we have just right well and that's the thing is i don't even know if any of those guys actually really like w- football i don't even i'm not sure why some of these guys even do it they go to brunch seems, on sunday seems like they hate actual it's crazy football. the brunch uh it's crazy but anyway it's i love brunch there we are brunch is the you know tits we're, we're, so we're loophole. A, you get the candy and alcohol it's like <laughs> loophole breakfast in general loophole yeah you can get breakfast at dinner Ugh. <laughs> So particular, the most particular person. If I've already had breakfast, I don't want breakfast again. <laughs> what if you haven't had breakfast? And it's not like a hungover thing. It's just like you woke up. Well, you're never not having breakfast, right? Uh, I mean, uh, you had a smoothie for breakfast. Dinner for breakfast is out? Or, or breakfast for dinner is out? Not necessarily. I just, by that point, I don't want French toast. I want fucking 
chicken and <laughs> carrots. Waffles? You oh. know, uh, chicken and waffles is acceptable. Yeah, that's um, what's wrong with French love. toast? With some bacon, you get some protein. In I, I just, I'm just like I just, I want ice cream. I want, I want uh, ice cream. I, I want. I did mean. I want a meat and two veg, and then I want to go ice cream oh, instead meat of and two in, veg. instead of going instead of going with the breakfast, des- which is basically dessert anyway. I did. Mean I just to want get a ice different cream dessert sandwich Dude, today. I'll Dang never it. forget. It was years ago, uh, back in the old. Well, I guess it's right when you moved into this house, and Al was like, "Casey, do you want?" Broccoli or asparagus, and and you were like, uh, both. And she goes, okay. And, and he look, he leans into me, and he goes, double veg. <laughs> and I bug out. And Al, his wife, was like, what did he say? Like, is he talking shit? <laughs> like, no, he was excited about two vegetables. The douche. <laughs> what a loser. Idiot. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this thing up. Let's get out of double here. Veg. We appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five-star review if you're listening on the podcast. Hit that five stars, man. Come on, man. All y'all, I, this is a bunch of listeners not had Hey, we did stars. ask for more comments in, uh, in a Patreon show like three weeks ago, and the comments are Oh, the end of this show is going to get roof. some comments, Let's baby. Go. Oh, you're definitely getting some comments on the the uh, the, the preaching you gave us. If you can find it. the guy who that tweet was, you can tell him I said, <laughs> said it. I'm, not, I'm never trying to hide anything from anybody. Just like, Bo, I'm, just having, I'm just having a good cite time. Cite our sources like we yeah. should. We would something to work on. Yeah, I saw it scrolling in it. And I was like, this is stupid. Is <laughs> it plagiarism in a video? I know if you put it on paper, it's... Yeah. But... I have no idea. We but are saying it's not ours. Come over to the uh, Patreon $5 holler Discord. We got ADP. We got drafts. All sorts of good stuff going on there. We got leagues. We got winners. We got winners. <laughs> <laughs> we got T-shirts. Rookie um, draft kit. Come, come check it all out. Rankings about to drop some actual rankings soon. Yeah. I think yeah. Now it's on me. It's been on him forever. Now it's on me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll get there. All right. Maybe tonight. We'll catch you next time. Peace.